We'll move on to Nico Carrillo versus Nang Ho. Yeah, this is another one we screamed for. This was crazy. This was a crazy fight. Dude. <laughs> Absolute insanity. Yeah, I mean, first off, Nico Carrillo, massive for the weight So class. tall. So you know, big. His last, was it his last fight that he fought um, Mong Tai? I think it was the last fight. Uh, yeah, it was. So he fights Mong Tai uh, in June. And he KOs him in round two. And you could tell he's just way bigger than him. And then they give him Nango. And I'm like, God damn, going from Mong Tai to Nango. And he's clearly bigger than him. But if anybody can fight through that, it's Nango. And that's one of the things, you know, all these Thais fight these, you know, these foreigners. And the foreigners are just much better at weight cutting. I don't know if the, the Thais just don't care about it as much or what it is, but it's just not in the culture, maybe. Um, but they're constantly undersized when they're fighting these foreigners. And it used to be that the skill gap would bridge that size difference and the ties would still win. Lately, it seems like Westerners are getting better at Muay Thai and the skill gap is tightening, but the size gap is not, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And I don't want to. I mean, their genes are not getting Nico. any different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, look, if, if Nico can make 145. Nango can make 135. It's as simple as I believe that, so. You know? Um, and I don't want to take anything away from Nico here because despite having a size difference, he still fights expertly. The guy is very, very good. Um, and clearly tough as nails because this first round, Nango <sighs> is blasting his lead leg. It is... Oh, my I mean, God. He has him at the end of the round. I mean... Nango was cracking him with the overhand and the left, the the uh, kick to the the left lead leg, and he's like hopping on one leg multiple oh, times yeah. through that first round, checking you with know? the opposite <laughs> leg on the other side and bringing it over. Yeah, I mean, and and there was a couple times where Nango was just going shin to shin and just didn't. Go oh, dude, up. it and it was, was like, bad. <laughs> I was like, dude, you, I don't want to see anything. I mean, look at this picture. Uh, that <sighs> cannot feel good to kick, um, but for Nango, it just doesn't matter. He just kept blasting that kick, and at the end of the round, it the round end the round one ends with Nico literally hopping back on one leg. The round yep, ends like a pogo then, stick, like a pogo stick. The round ends, and he visibly limping to his corner. And I was like, "Shout out Nico, you're a great fighter, but Nango is my boy. He's had some tough times lately. I need him to win this." And I was stoked. And then round two started, and Nico comes out southpaw, and uh, yeah, Blunderbub says I would limp <laughs> too if someone hit my shins with tree trunks. Yeah, dude. banana tree trunks. <laughs> yeah, and round two comes out. He comes out southpaw, and I'm like, that's the right move. But how comfortable is he fighting southpaw? I don't remember really ever watching him fight southpaw, and Nango is continuing to throw that rear leg kick, but now. Nico is it's is hitting the lead leg now, which is his right leg because he's southpaw, and he's checking it perfectly. It's just he's checking it perfectly over and over and over again. And I'm like, Nango, you gotta throw an outside leg kick, throw it with your lead leg. Like you have to switch if he switched stances and he's checking it now, you need to adjust. You need to make the adjustment now. And he did it. Yep. And Nico just unloaded with his hands. And, and you know, his combos are ferocious, dude. Like He's throwing straight shots. He's throwing long uppercuts, extended uppercuts, outside hooks, like just a f- big flurry. And Nango, at a certain point, Nango is going down, catches himself on the ropes, comes back up, and he's still getting lit up. And I was like, no, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Anonymous says, I was looking at Carrillo's record and saw he beat Sexton last April before they both joined one. Oh, I did not know that. Interesting. Man, so yeah. Sexton, Mong Tai, and now Nango. I mean, God damn, dude. Um and it is perfect. He 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 steps back. He switches back to orthodox. Nango throws the leg kick. As soon as he switches to orthodox, he steps back into southpaw, jabs him, switches back to, to orthodox, and just nice little step and elbow and just shut him off. He falls back. Absolute light switch. Yeah. I mean, that elbow And was then so he perfect. collapsed to the floor, too. It was awesome. It was like one of those yeah. scenes that's like you could see he put absolutely everything he had in that last verse. <laughs> Like if yeah. Nango didn't go down, who knows what he would have had left for that third? Probably not True, much. Because like he unloaded a ton, and you know, granted he didn't eat as many leg kicks in that second round, but that that damage, despite not taking more kicks necessarily, it still accumulates as time goes on. And the more you use that leg, and the more you sit down in the corner, and things like that, like who who knows? There's the elbow right there, just perfectly on the button. 
um and nango just falls straight to the corner and yep. it's like looking off into the distance like i mean, a nice little nap see man yeah it sucks to see um you know but if you didn't see it um we can watch some of it right now <laughs> if you also want to be sad yeah this is this is another one that woke up my mom in the house she was asleep and we were going crazy over it oh really <laughs> yeah Blender says, sorry, well, I was pulling for Nango too. <laughs> I mean, God, I love the guy. You know, he's had such a great career resurgence himself, you know, late in his late in his career, late in his age. But you know, he can't, And the crowd he can't loved him coming in. They were they were behind him for sure. This was one of those fights yeah. that like erupted the crowd for sure. Oh, definitely. <sighs> oh, that looks like so painful. Oh, that looks so painful. I mean, look at him hopping. <laughs> I mean, clearly compromised with that leg. Uh, shout out one. This is on the Instagram, and there he is oh. limping back to his corner. Oh. Just brutal, dude. Oh. And then uh, I don't think they. If, have I'm, a... if I'm the corner, I go out there and I grab him and I carry him back to the corner. <laughs> yeah, dude, a hundred percent. I don't know if they posted the clip of the finish. Maybe they did here. Looks like it. Maybe let's see. Anonymous says sad for Nango, but I'm glad Nico won because it shakes up the division from the status quo. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, I always love that. Out. Um, I thought uh, I thought for sure Nango was about to retire. Um, because well, he he had a concussion, bro. He did not know where he was. Oh yeah, he was out of it. Uh, Austin says can't stay, uh, but hope the rest of the stream goes well. And looking forward to watching. Uh, where to go? Watching a redo of it later. Got a feel for Nango here, though. Kind of sad, really. I think Haggerty beats Carrillo, though uh yeah Haggerty is something else man i i haven't seen unless he him. catches him but i mean Haggerty has yeah. way more skills Haggerty is definitely you can tell Haggerty has uh yeah he's more versatile more weapons he's more like like he's more surgical and technical with what he's choosing to do also um nico just blitzes on. and i'm not saying nico's just like a brawler he's very good himself but yeah Haggerty, i think is just another tier up i could see this being some of the, one of those things where if they make the fight Haggerty beats Nico, and then they rematch somewhere down the line as Nico gets some more experience because he's still so young. Um, but shout out Austin, thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, they do the interview, post fight interview. Nango just walks over; he looks like a zombie, and he starts he starts talking about how he loves Nico and like Nico showed him a ton of respect, so the crowd should respect him. And I was like, oh no, this is Nango's retirement right here. And like, yeah. I'm glad they let him talk at least, you know, because um, there's been some times where where Nango kind of gets snubbed a little bit post fight and. Uh, uh, it was cool to see the respect between the two. Um, Nico gets a lot of hate for the size differences in his fights, but I mean, if he can make 145, that's where he's going to. Especially fight. through hydration, it's not his fault. Yeah, it's not his fault, and it was cool to see. You know, he'll get, he got some hate for this fight, and regardless, Nango's still the class act and gives him respect. And it's like if the fighters respecting him, then maybe the fans on the couch should too. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's all I had for that one. It's bittersweet because Nico's clearly a very skilled fighter and puts on entertaining fights, but sucks to see your boy go down like that. Yeah, that was a crazy moment. That's one of those moments they're gonna play in uh, in like uh, their pro promos for a long time. Dude. That was like one of those rocky moments he's never forgetting. Yeah, to come back from that after the first round, you know, you because know, like we said with with uh, certain fighters, he might not be walking right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's Sunday. It's been a couple days now. Uh, but you know, a lot of guys can be the hammer and they just do not know how to be the nail and they fold. Clearly Nico's not that guy. That's, that's what you want to see as someone is progressing through their career and they are hammering everybody, you know, you see them test some adversity and that's some people failed that test and he did not, he looked good. Uh, but we can move on. Um, let's see. Anonymous says, uh, I wonder if super like and Rod Tang will call out Nico like they did Haggerty. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, but it, like like you said, um, I think it was the you that said it. Um, yes, it was. Uh, I like the shakeup. I like another guy getting inserted into those conversations because, like, the more they can bring these guys up and fill these rosters at the top at the top level, is very good for one moving forward. So I like the fact that now Nico's even being mentioned with Rod Tang and Superlek and Haggerty and like all. It's just very good, you know. Yep. Uh, Having more see. names at the top isn't a bad thing. Never a bad thing. Especially uh, recognizable names. Yeah, unless the UFC. It seems like they want the opposite lately.
Hey everybody, Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.